Good morning folks, uh, we are yet again back at Not Your Average Bikes and today is all about me and the V. Um, and the main focus of today is I want to have a check of the valve clearances and in the process of doing that most of this bike will have to be stripped down and it should give us the uh, ability to look at other things as we go along and uh, we'll bring you along for the ride. Never fear people, I am here also, I'm just sticking behind the camera today. There's a lot to do, we've got a lot to take off on this bike to even get anywhere near the valves. So we are just going to crack on and do that, we're not going to go into a massive amount of depth on this because it's all fairly self-explanatory, we're just taking things like the screen off and the fairings etc. But they're all uh, really obvious where you need to detach those, so we'll get on and do that, catch up with you in a bit. Panels away. So we've got a total of about four different bits and bobs to disconnect. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head every thing's task, but uh, got a little connector there, that's your main fuel, the overflow, and then I think the fuel sensor, but uh, all to be removed for the tank. And I would do this when you've got less fuel than full, because it's quite a hefty lump to shift. With the tank off, we then need to get the air box off. So there's these four screws on the top, which get you on the inside to then reveal another four bolts to be removed. There's these four here, which I think is possibly a five uh, Allen jobber. And you can see right down into the port. So don't be dropping anything down there because you're gonna ruin your engine. It's also me worth mentioning at this point um, you can have a little eyeball at your air filter which is just here uh, you've got the one screw that attaches it in place because if you've gone all this way you might as well give it a nosy so yeah that could probably do with a little bit of a clean but uh, easy now that we're here Okay, I think we should be able to do, uh, withdraw the box at this point, but I'm just guessing, um, so we'll see what's still attached, if it wants to come out. There we are. Looks like a, the brain of the bike almost. Okay, this is the secondary air valve or emissions bollocks, um, so we'll just remove that, we'll probably put it in the bin, but keep it for safeness. Um, there's a little clip down the bottom there, which is if you've got spindly long fingers, you can get to, but you can wriggle about like a fool for a while with these long pliers. So back down in here, uh, we've got the stick coils, which sit on top of the spark plugs. And these do have a bit of a, a, a renowned problem for being stuck in, because uh, they kind of go a bit corroded with any moisture and stuff that gets in there so getting these out might be a problem but fingers crossed um, they'll be smooth enter player two <laughs> <laughs> player two has entered the game. versus <laughs> okay so that rubber okay it's number one so yeah it is a pretty tight fit there and as you can see We'll, we'll come back in a little bit. There's some corrosion going on there. It's there where it's split. Yeah. That's, that's the telltale that you've got issues. Okay. Kieran has issues. <laughs> yep, that one is also got quite some crack in it. Crispy. So, possibly original ones. 
Possibly. <laughs> possibly the original one. And I think possibly need renewing. I think they might have been second hand off Noah's Ark. <laughs> you, oh yeah. So ideally, you need something of about that sort of length. Um, so when you pop it down into the holes for the spark plug, nuisance, it'll sit just about proud. So you can get your ratchet on there. and loosen away. Well there we are then, that's the first spark plug out and Kieran is on with getting the second one out. Okay, second one removed, slightly more effort on that one. With it being on the opposite side, it's a bit more difficult to get to it with the added height of the chain side. But um, this tool can be quite handy, able to get a bit of an angle with it, but uh, yeah, not looking the best condition in terms of the body, but uh, top again looking okay. Moving on, um, we've got a little bit of uh, blue roll or tissue, whatever, just stuffed in the, the tops there, because we have got the plugs out at the moment, so we don't want anything falling down into the cylinders. Uh, we're going to be removing these uh, top nuts or bolts. I think, yep, they are 10 mil, and there's four of them. Just crack them off and then gradually release the rest. Some wriggling required. So there's that little uh, bracket there that was holding the uh, throttle cable, clutch cable, I can't remember, over this side. But that was proving a bit troublesome leaving it on to get the cover off. But that's now out the way. Uh, should be able to wriggle this free so close oh hey cable and there it is looking Ooh, pretty grimy inspection cover removal and that's just whatever giant screwdriver type item you can get hold of and what do we find inside Ooh, gold doubloon. Kieran's just been rotating this engine round to top dead centre on cylinder one and he's done that by putting a 17mm socket in there and looking through the viewing window until you can see the 1T mark. Now let's have a look at the manual. That's this mark here, A. There's another 1T there which is a different way around and then 2T and then another two teeth that's the wrong way around, but it is this one that we're looking for. So we're looking for that mark through this little viewing port, and then what that means is up here. Tell us, Kieran, what does it mean? It means many things um, that I don't fully understand, but uh, it shows that we are level across. There's some markings on these um, sprockets that create a line across, which should mean things are in the right place for us to do the work. We're going to put uh, our own marks on the chain and sprockets so that when we come, to, if we do need to adjust anything, we can bleh, 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 return it back to where it needs to be. So here's a cam from an ER6 or Versus engine. And you can see a little bit more clearly the marks that we were talking about there. You can see there's a little line on the left that says in and a little line on the right that says X and they should line up with the top of the engine casing. Same for the other one as well. So we're at the point where we can actually start checking the clearances. Um, so we've got a handy little feeler gauge set here. And what we want to do is, obviously the measurements required, we'll put up on the screen. And with that information, we can slide down in here. And we'll take the biggest one that uh, we think is going to be within range and we pop that underneath and that doesn't quite fit so you jump down to the next one give that a little jab in there and that doesn't quite fit so you keep going down till you find the right one that fits and we need to record that information on a little chart Here's a little chart then, we've obviously got the exhaust valves and the inlet valves. 
we've got cylinder one and two and then on each cylinder we've got two valves for each so for example uh, the first one that we measured was the exhaust valve on cylinder one and it was one of the two possible valves there so the uh, measurement that we recorded was 0 0.2 mil on that one on the next one it was 0 0.178 mil and then we went over to the inlet side and did the uh, measurements there so that was 0.152 mil and then the second valve on the inlet was 0.152 mil again after that we rotated the engine round to uh, top dead center on cylinder number two and that's the uh, 2T mark that you might remember, remember from the manual earlier and then we did the same process so we got uh, some more figures there so they're the existing figures and what we need to do now is remove the cams and see what shims are already there so that we can calculate what we need to replace them with so Kieran's just marking a line on the timing chain and this cam and the timing sprocket. chain and that cam sprocket so that when we remove all of this we can put this back in exactly the same position as it is now which saves a lot of hassle later on right getting these cams out then you've got to remove the cam cap bolty things so these are the little red ones that you can see we've got four over here four over there and then some stuff up on up on the back edge there so we're removing all the red capped bolts so we can get the cams out eight mil Here's a little box with a little doodle on it and that's so that we can keep all the bolts in the right place because sometimes they are different lengths and we don't want to mix them up so as Kieran's taking them off I'm sticking them in the holes. So while Kieran's getting on with removing those bolts up there I'm going to come down here and I'm going to crack this uh, large centre nut on the cam chain tensioner so that we can uh, get that sorted when we put it back on. We are then going to take that off as a, a smaller bolt there and one down the bottom, I think they're probably 8mm and we're going to remove that from the engine there's the cam chain tensioner then and I released the tension on this one before taking it out of the engine because when it's out of the engine that's very hard to do there's a top tip from James, huzzah! once the uh, caps have been removed then uh, we can take out the uh, camshaft itself just be careful when you take the second camshaft out that you secure the chain so it doesn't fall in to the engine itself. Something like a zip tie is pretty handy just to strap around one of the uh, probably the throttle cables going over the top just to keep it where you can actually get hold of it again. Now a handy tool for this next part is getting yourself a magnet because that way we can get hold of the buckets, lift them out and that gives us access to the shims. Okay, and tiny little shims on the inside there. And sometimes they will have markings to say what size it is, but we do have a jazzy little uh, micrometer, which we can double check the sizes and uh, pop in the correct ones. Now I measured that first one then, it's just a process of going down through all the rest of them, taking them out, sticking them somewhere sensible and measuring what shims we've got already. Okay then, so we took all the uh, buckets and the shims out and measured what we'd got already. They were all basically threes the whole way down. We'd put 2.97 but that's meant to be a three. Three, 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 so they were all threes already. So using the uh, measurements that we'd got right at the beginning and now we know what the shims are we can calculate what the new shims need to be and we can do that by using the handy chart in the Haynes manual this one's for the intake valves there's a separate one for the uh, exhaust valves and basically we're looking at 2.95s or 290s across the board so Kieran over there has just put all those in place and he's now slotting the buckets back into their little homes. With all that gubbins back in place, it's time to uh, reinstall this dripping shaft. Oh. So we need to make sure that we line up the marks that we had before on the end of the sprocket. And John may need to assist on this one. I will, because look, he's not lined up. Oh. Ah. Who would have thought it without being able to see it? He's one tooth off, so... Oh, that's give... not bad for an eyeball without bad. seeing. I'll give him a hand. 
Here we are then, all back in, and you can see that the lines that we made on the sprockets and the chain all line up, so we know that we're exactly where we left it. And now we've got to get the uh, cam cappy bolty jobber things that I can never remember the name of back on top. All the covers are back in place now. Um, what we've just got to make sure is that uh, they're seated properly on the sleeves on each of the corners so that when you're bolting it down you're not going to sort of mash anything up. And we'll get the bolts in now. All the bolts are back in and we've torqued them down to 12 newton meters following the uh, specified order from the manual. We then need to reinstall the tensioner uh, which needs a little bit of resetting before it goes back in. So you unwind eventually and then you can spring load jobber like that and fit it back in the bike. Once we've done that we're going to need to rotate the engine a few times for the um, buckets and shims to settle into place properly and then we can re-measure everything on the clearances to make sure that we're at the right tolerances. As Kieran mentioned then, we are now going to re-measure the valve clearances and I've just rotated to the engine three or four times and then gone back to top dead center on cylinder number one so that we can do that. So I've just re-measured the valve clearances now that we've changed the shims and they are all where they need to be. They're all within the tolerance, some slightly wider than others, but all happy and awesome. So now it's a case of throwing all this back together as quickly as possible. So I'm just wrestling with the uh, seal, putting this top cover back on. But that is essentially the job complete. Um, I've got to obviously rebuild the entire bike more or less, but you've done it yourselves, so you'll know what you're doing on that front. But uh, thanks for watching. Ding! Give us a like bell notifications all that business find us on facebook and uh, if you've got any useful comments please feel free to throw them below and we'll do as best to get back to you we'll see you on the next one